Monday morning was stressful, but uh, it wasn't out of the ordinary anymore. So we were actually feeling pretty good until someone said that there had been a call from someone, um, I don't remember who, but they said that the soldiers had breached the, the front gate and were coming into the compound. So I sent my first message to the UN to say that our gate had been breached and that was one of many messages that I sent before my phone was taken. We heard people uh, breaking into the compound. They were uh, shooting and stealing things. About an hour later, they figured out where we were and uh, they methodically tried to break in the door. So I was hiding underneath the bed at first sign of contact with the soldiers. And the first thing they did was shout, you know, where is the money, where is the laptop, where is the phone? They kept asking people, uh, what is your nationality? Where are you from? Uh, they, they were looking for Americans. John was um, one of our local colleagues and uh, he sought refuge with us because he thought he'd be safer with his international colleagues. When the soldiers first entered the building, they saw John run from one of the apartment rooms and they grabbed him and they threw him to the ground and they started beating him with rifle butts. And while this was happening, a few of the soldiers came from behind and were just shouting and you know, one of the distinct words that came out was a word, nuer. And this sort of acted like a trigger for the soldier holding a gun to John. Two shots were fired and he immediately fell to the ground. It was clear that the situation had really escalated. Successive waves of soldiers came into the room and they separated the men and the women. I was trapped in a room and repeatedly raped. Sometimes by one person, sometimes with many people in the room. Until I was taken out of that room and I was put in another room and it started all over again. I went to hide inside a bathroom with another 11 people. Everyone was trying to write messages on Facebook, WhatsApp. We were asking for help. One of the soldiers looked me right in the eye. Uh, he asked me where I was from. And I said I was American. And he started aggressively patting me down. The first soldier was very clear. He put a gun to my head and he said, if you don't have sex with me, then every soldier in the room will have sex with you and then we'll shoot you. So he made it very clear that there really wasn't another option. And he was telling me to open your legs, open your legs. And I wasn't really cooperating. Um, so then he pulled my pants off completely and took both my shoes off, uh, threw them on the floor, and then he raped me. And it didn't last very long. I would say maybe a minute. Some of the soldiers were aggressive and they kept shouting, Kawaja, Kawaja, the white lady white lady and they tried to get the others involved, tried to encourage them. Some of the soldiers wanted to sit down and make small talk like we were on some sort of date. It was completely surreal. Uh, one of them, he wasn't one of the ones who raped me, he said, are you sad? And I said, well, yes, <laughs> I'm upset. And he said, why? And I said, your soldiers raped me and I'm upset because they shouldn't do that. And he said, you can't be upset. There's no need to be upset because this is the work of God and not the work of man. And you don't need to be upset. And then he walked off. It was about seven o'clock, 7.30 later day and we were extracted by someone in uniform. We actually got taken to the National Security Building and there were again many men in uniform standing around. Um, they were all pretending they didn't know what had happened to us. Oh, you're okay. Uh, 
you're okay here, don't be scared. Um, and at that point, one of my colleagues uh, was saying, uh, I don't think you understand um, what we have just been through. Um, one of us has been shot, uh, the women have been raped. How can you tell us to relax? And this man said, I'm sorry for the inconvenience this has caused you. I went out and tried to see if there was anybody, but I couldn't see anybody. And these soldiers saw me and ordered me to go to this apartment. And with his gun, he, he touched me everywhere. It was violent and it was so scary. He ordered me to take my pants off and I saw my friend being raped. And he ordered me to go there and I had to wait in, in front of this girl. Then they went away and it was this long and terrible and horrific night waiting for, for help, waiting for someone to come. Generally, the compound has security lighting, but there was nothing, and it was just actually pitch black. There was rubble everywhere because they had upended everything in the apartment block, so I kept creeping out of my hiding place ever so often to just listen and see if it was safe. I wanted to get out of there and find a time when I could run to the bush and hide. I could see John's body was still on the ground and we covered it with a sheet out of respect. It was incredible. The first moment I understood that morning has arrived. The birds were singing. Once I heard the birds, I said to my friend, the birds are singing, morning has arrived. And we cried. We survive. We're whisked out of the country and given treatment straight away. We have access to counselling. We are taken back to our homes that are in relatively stable parts of the world and we're looked after, you know. It's a horrific experience and a traumatic thing to recover from, but that's our experience. For the women of South Sudan, that experience of rape much more violent way and much more often than we ever would. But they didn't get the chance to leave. 